Greetings guys and gals, I'm Houndlog Snake Snow 8, and welcome to Let's Play King's Quest 6, Air Today, Gone Tomorrow. I'm excited for this one, this is really one of my favorites of the King's Quest series. So right off the bat we're going to watch the opening. Um, before I should say, the opening is quite a bit different style than the rest of the game, you'll see when we get there. Long ago, in the castle of a kingdom called Devontree. This music sounds familiar. Sounds like when we met Princess Cosima. Yeah, you'll notice the 3D style exactly. here is a lot different here than... You are. Oh, hang on. Oh, you're still not thinking about Cosima, are you? Hmm? I suppose I am. Son, it's been months. You've got to pull yourself together. After all, you only met her that once. I know. Have you discovered anything about the land of the Green Isles? No. No one's even heard of it. It's like she's just vanished. I wish I could help. Please try to think about something else, dear. I'll try, Mother. We have Queen Valenice making a reappearance. And sorry for interrupting, by the way. I'll try not to interrupt the rest of the intro. I'm um, just saying this before I uh, <laughs> shut up, though. I'm just saying this 3D style is different than what we'll actually see for the graphics of the game. So it's kind of a neat uh, change, though. What's this? Magic mirror is acting up again. Was this the fourth time it's been important to the story? What can it show us? I feel so alone. I don't know what to do. Alexander, I wish you were here. Alexander, Alexander, Alexander. Kashima, wait! Mother, mother, come quick! Alexander, what on earth? You're white as a ghost. Mother, I saw Kashima. She was in the mirror. In the mirror? The magic mirror? Yes. And it showed me how to find her. How? The stars. I saw the stars outside her window. I can navigate by the stars. Oh, Alexander, if you really go... It will be all right, Mother. I promise. And off to the land of the Green Isles we're going, I suppose. Well, Alexander's going there, and, uh... Well, it's not exactly a big secret at this point, but Alexander is our main character this time around. It seems that every time there's a King's Quest game that's divisible by three, he is the uh, protagonist, because he was the main protagonist in King's Quest 3, and now he's also the main protagonist in King's Quest 6. And boy, am I excited for this one. Let me tell you, this is probably my favorite game in the series, and uh, is widely considered by many King's Quest fans to be the best game in the series. By the way, if this 3D style intro is not for you, um, not to worry, the actual game is compl uh, completely different graphics, more akin to uh, King's Quest V, so yeah. That's off to sea! What is this, Wind Waker? It's like that part in the pirate ship at the beginning. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but yeah, I've been putting this one off for a while. Um, I was really excited to start this one, though, I gotta say. Three long months, Prince Alexander sailed the known seas and beyond. Long months, eh? The music's not too bad, I gotta say. So this game takes place three months after the last one, at least uh, apparently. <laughs> and there's Alexander's crew. Only time we'll ever see them. <laughs> and we sail peacefully into the sunset. I'm sure nothing could possibly go wrong from this point forward. At all. As the ship nears the shore, day turns to night and the sea turns violent. Uh, maybe not. The sea turns violent! Oh no! Abandoned ship! Alexander never has good luck with pirate ships, does he? And what's this? King's Quest 6! That's right! 
We're starting King's Quest 6, even though it's been fairly uh, obvious that we've been starting King's Quest 6 for the past few minutes. So, um, not exactly a thrilling revelation, but it'll be good for the thumbnail, I'm sure. So yeah, let's get this show on the road, shall we? Written and directed by Roberta Williams and Jane Jensen. Produced by Robert W. Lin Linsley and William D. Skirvin. Okay. Directed by Roberta Williams, William D. Skirvin, and Jane Jensen. Art designer, William D. Skirvin. Oh, Skirvin pops up again. Good for you, William. Composer, Chris Brayman. Text and dialogue, Jane Jensen. Yeah, Jane Jensen did a wonderful job writing this game, I gotta say. Senior artists, Michael Hutchinson and John Schrodes. Schrodes, that's kind of a good name. Team artists, Russell True Love. Oh, what a far throb he is. And Diana Yelke, I believe the name was. Senior programmer, Roger, uh, Robert D. Lindsay. Sorry, not Roger. Team programmers, Randy McDeal, Robert D. Mallory, Victor. It's kind of odd they're giving us the credits at the beginning, but uh, Team quality assurance, Robin Bradley. And? Alexander awakens to find himself on an unfamiliar beach. For a moment, he is too dazed to remember how he got here. Then, he does remember. The shipwreck. The sea. Just as he had seen his men safely into the lifeboats, a gigantic wave picked him up and tossed him overboard into the churning sea. That was the last he'd seen of his crew. Debris from the shipwreck is scattered along the shore, but of the lifeboats and his men, there is thankfully no trace. He can only hope and pray that the lifeboats survived the currents and that his men made their way safely back to Devontree. I sure hope so. I'm going to turn up the uh, volume slightly because I don't want it to be too quiet. I want to be able to hear what the narrator has to say. And here we are. We're starting King's Quest VI. Right off the bat, you'll notice the game is quite similar to King's Quest V in the style uh, of the art and the way you play it. It uses icons just like the last time. So there's no text. I can't say, look, ship. Doesn't work. Actually, he walked over there, but that's because I pushed enter while the cursor was there. Um, if I want to actually look at the ship, I use the eye icon and then click on it. The remains of Alexander's sailing ship lie dashed upon the distant shore. Yeah, and I also mentioned that Alexander's men uh, hopefully got away, which I can hope is true because we actually will never hear from them again, so hopefully they did. I want to see if I can uh, check the okay, detail volumes. My uh, speed's okay for now. Um, though, if necessary, I will uh, adjust the settings. So it looks like there's a bit of debris lying around here. A long plank lies on the beach. No doubt it once belonged to Alexander's ship. Indeed. I'm going to save here because, um, well, it's a good idea to save. And as you may notice, I'm using Scum VM this time. You'll notice the save screen looks slightly different. And it allows me to save quite a few... Uh, save games, I must say. I doubt I'll need all 100 of them, but just in case. Anyway, we have to name our uh, save, don't we? Whoops. Hang on, let's try that again. We have to name our save, so I will name it. Let's see here. I'll keep up with the tradition of always naming my main save after the uh, subtitle of the game, which is Air Today. Whoops, if I can spell correctly. Gone Tomorrow. And I'm saving because, like uh, several other King's Quest games, you actually can die on the very first screen. But King's Quest VI is slightly more merciful, as we'll soon see. Let's see if we can uh, jump to the water here. Actually, look like there's something shiny on the ground there. Alexander's royal insignia ring lies abandoned on the sand. It must have slipped from his finger during the shipwreck. Fortunately, it was not lost in the sea. That actually is quite fortunate. Let's pick that up. Alexander picks up his royal insignia ring from the beach. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to show off the death on the first screen. So we'll save. And so let's just hop in the water. I'm sure it's perfectly safe. The ocean is not as calm as it appears. Underwater currents tug at Alexander's legs. Well, I guess we'll restore since we're dead. Wait a second. We're not dead. What's going on here? 
We're not dead. It told us it was dangerous, but we're not dead. Well, you know, I know it's probably impossible to perceive this, but the game actually warns you when there's danger this time around, or at least it's more merciful. It tells you that the sea is dangerous before it kills you. Now, of course, if we don't listen to the warning, it will kill us. So let's say we're stupid and say, oh, I want to go deeper into the freaking sea. Let's do it. The underwater toe is amazingly strong here. It pulls ferociously at Alexander's legs. Before Alexander can retreat, the current grabs his legs. The shifting sand vanishes from beneath his feet. Against his best efforts, he is dragged out to sea. And yes, it does kill you. So like the previous games, there is still death, obviously. The currents around the island pull Alexander under. As Alexander struggles to the surface for the third and last time, he finds himself wishing he'd paid more attention to the warning signs of an undertow. And I like the depth. Tickets. Oh. Yeah. Need a little uh. Nothing death like animation. getting swept off your feet. Yeah, every time you die in this game, you'll see Alexander going into the underworld, which at first you may think, oh, that's just a funny little background event. Maybe it's not so much a background event, but I won't say much more about that until it becomes relevant. So yeah, uh, King's Quest VI is much more merciful than uh, King's Quest V and the previous four games in the fact that it actually will warn you when there's danger like that. It won't just kill you for no reason. It'll actually tell you when you have something to fear, or at least you'll um, be in some for logically uh, reasonable form of danger before you die. So we have our uh, royal insignia ring from Daventry, but we also want to take a closer look around the beach. Let's take a look underneath this plank. Alexander pushes the plank to one side. A box has been partially buried under sand. Okay, let me take a look at that box. Alexander's treasure box lies partially buried in the sand. It must have washed ashore with the other ship debris. I see. The one gripe I have with this game is the way the icons are structured. They put the hand before the eye, which makes it a little more inconvenient when you want to look at something and then pick it up, but that's really the only gripe I have with this game. And what do we have here? There's a copper coin in the treasure box. The coin bears the seal of Daventry and King Graham's noble face. Interesting. So I suppose Daventry, like um, uh, several other countries in real life, have the face of their monarch on the back. There's nothing of interest in that part of the box. Oh, uh, sorry. I must have missed it. There's nothing. Uh, there? There's nothing. No, this? Alexander there we go. takes the coin and leaves the ruined box where it is. Well, we did uh, retrieve some stuff from the shipwreck. We got a copper coin and our royal insignia ring. Better than nothing, I suppose. So let's save. And where exactly are we anyway? Can we take a look around? Alexander is standing on a beach littered with debris from his shipwreck. A path leads north into the lush green island. An occasional breeze rustles the nearby foliage. Hmm. Well, let's uh, see if we can explore this island some more. Is this the land of the Green Isles, as we were looking for? I mean, it is an isle, and it is green, so maybe there's a connection, I hope. Hmm. Let me take a look around here. A grand old tree stretches its luxurious limbs out over the crossroads. I see. Looks like there's a castle to the right and a... Um, Village to the left. I think we're going to go to the castle first off. See what we can find out there. After all, we're a bit lost and we want to try and figure out why we're here. So um, I'm sure talking to the folks in the castle would probably uh, let us know. Also, yeah, that coinage. Um, it's neat that King Graham's face is on the back. Because here in Canada, um, we have the face of our monarch on the back of the uh, coin as well. Let's take a look at this castle, shall we? The castle appears to be of Moorish architecture. Its marbled walls and delicate inlaid mosaics are unlike anything Alexander has ever experienced before. His own home, though lovely and dear to his heart, seems rough-hewn compared to this delicate beauty. Quite a beautiful place, I assume. Can we go inside that castle? It does look like it's guarded, but hopefully the people here are friendly. Let's see if we can talk to these folks. 
Also, they don't appear human either. They look like dogs. Alexander politely addresses the odd-looking guards at the castle doors, hoping to learn more about his predicament. Good day to you, guards. I was cast upon this island in a storm, and I'm a little confused about my location. Could you tell me what place this is and who lives in this castle? Hey, what is that you say? A castaway? A likely story. We haven't had any foreigners in this part since El Hazaret arrived. Ah, don't be so rude, Gruff. He's not asking for any secrets. You're standing on the Isle of the Crown, lad, and this is the Castle of the Crown. The royal family resides here. Uh, rather, what's left of the royal family. The Isle of the Crown? But tell me, am I anywhere near the land of the Green Isles? This is the land of the Green Isles. The Isle of the Crown is the main island, foolish boy. Then Princess Cosima must live in this very castle. Aye, the princess is indeed our treasure jewel to God, and we consider it an honor. I see. Well, it looks like we found the right place. We did get to the land of the Green Isles after all, and we appeared beyond the main island, the Isle of the Crown. Either we have incredible luck, or it's as if we were meant to be here. Hm, I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't look like the guards trust us right away, but maybe they would trust us if we showed them our ring, proved to them who we were. After all, we did say to Cosima that we would visit her. Alexander decides to show his royal insignia ring to the Castle of the Crown guards. With all of his papers lost in the shipwreck, it is the only possible calling card he can think of. Good day. I'm Prince Alexander of Daventry. I'm an acquaintance of Princess Cosima. If you could just inform her that I'm here, please. <laughs> so everyone says. Let me just look at that ring. What does it say, Gruff? Kingdom of Daventry, Prince Alexander. Ah, wait here while I go see what Captain Saladin thinks of this. Captain Saladin, eh? Hmm. Also, what did he mean when he said what's left of the royal family? The guard returns a moment later with a majestic looking creature. Captain Saladin speaks with a voice that is gentle, but reflects a will of iron. Prince Alexander of Daventry, I presume. I'm afraid I'm unfamiliar with your country, but I'm sure Wazir al Hazred will want to meet you, if indeed you are a friend of the princess. Please, follow me. I like Captain Saladin. He's not a bad guy. Also, yeah, what did he mean by what's left of the family? When we last heard from Kasima, she said she was going to see her parents again. Lord al Hazred. A visitor to see you, oh, Prince right. Alexander of Daventry. What is it that you seek, Prince Alexander? Pardon the intrusion, my lord, but I came to see Princess Cosima. Some months ago, my father, King Graham, saved my family and I from imprisonment under an evil wizard named Mordak. The same wizard that kidnapped the princess? Exactly. When my father rescued us, he also liberated Cosima and sent her home. Then your father has my gratitude, and that of the entire kingdom. But I'm afraid I still fail to see the purpose of your visit. <clears throat> well, I came to make sure that Cosima arrived safely and to pay my respects. Before we parted, she gave me an invitation to visit. I have no doubt she did exactly that at the time, Prince Alexander. However, things have greatly changed for Cosima since her ordeal in Mordak's castle. Cosima's parents both became ill and died while she was gone. Oh. Cosima is sequestered in mourning for them as befits a princess. She is not receiving visitors of any kind. Even if she were, I do not think your visit would be appropriate. You see, it is time for Cosima to take her responsibilities seriously. With her parents gone, she no longer has the luxury to be a carefree maiden. As was her parents' wish, Cosima and I are to be wed. 
We shall rule the kingdom together. I assure you, our marriage is all Cassima wants now. As a prince and a gentleman, it would be best that you leave before there is any further embarrassment. I see. I suppose that I was mistaken. I thought for certain that Cassima... Well, I apologize. A young man sees what he wishes to see. I'm sorry you've wasted your time traveling to the land of the Green Isles. May your journey home be swift. Hmm. Perhaps I will take the opportunity to look around your fair land while I'm here. I would advise against that. The kingdom is rather, shall we say, inhospitable these days. But it is your neck. You may risk it if you please. Captain Saladin will escort you from the castle. Good day. Hmm. Well, that certainly was quite informative, wasn't it? You have had your hearing with Wizir al Hazred. I trust you will respect his wishes and not return. I have been instructed not to let you into the castle again. Good day, my lord. Captain Saladin whispers something to the guard dogs at the castle gate, and they nod with understanding. Alexander has a feeling they won't be letting him into the castle again. Well, it seems our adventure is off to a little bit of a slow start. After all, it turns out the vizier of, um... Well, I guess let's recap the whole thing in a nutshell. It turns out Cosima's parents died while she was gone in King's Quest V, which I guess is pretty a pretty sad thing, I would imagine. And with her parents out of the way, now the vizier and her are going to marry and rule the kingdom together. It seems that Cosima and the vizier do not want anyone visiting them now after all this has all gone down. So we are not exactly welcome in the castle, and he said that the uh, inhabitants of the island would not be very hospitable either. I mean, from what we've seen so far, that seems fairly believable. But I guess we'll have to see if we can um, meet some more people in the island before that. Before we uh, go to the village, however, let's take a look at this path to the left. Perhaps there's a secret back entrance to the castle. Just like in Mordak's castle, I'm sure. Let's see. Aha! A wall! Uh, not exactly as wonderful as I thought, but it's something, I suppose. The side of the castle is one big blank wall. I see. Um, unfortunately, we can't really do much at this screen, but we do know that there is another side of the castle. You can't actually go any further in this direction. I just thought I'd show off that there is a, um, a blank wall on the side of the castle, which will be important if you decide to make a certain choice later in the game. Because uh, King's Quest VI, unlike the previous games, actually has a little bit of element uh, of choice to it. There are a couple different endings you can get in the end, depending on uh, the paths you take. And I'll try and show both of them. There is a short path, which you can get, which is easier to get, and you don't have to do as much um, to get to it. But you will miss parts of the game, and you won't get a full score if you do wish to get the short ending. But it is unique, so I will show it off, and I will also do the true uh, long ending, or the good ending, anyway. Um, so let me see, uh, I'm thinking, should I perhaps stop the episode here, just to get, you know, the introduction stuff out of the way? And uh, next time on King's Quest VI, air today, gone tomorrow, we will go to the village and see what we can find there. So I suppose I'll see you then. Stay tuned, everyone.